This Drake Law Library video will demonstrate how to use the web browser version of the Aspen Learning Library while you're logged in with your personal account. The login instructions can be found on our Study Aids LibGuide. I am now logged on to the web browser version, and you can see at the top of the page that I am accessing the Drake University subscription under my personal login information. To find a book I might want to read, I can use the search box, and as I start typing in a search term, there will be suggested searches underneath, but I could click on one of those, and then it would take me straight to that book. At any point, if I click on the Aspen logo, I'm going to come back to the home page. In addition to the simple search, there's an advanced search screen. This opens a form where I can put in my search terms. I can indicate whether I want them to be phrases or not. I can specify that I'm looking for an author or an ISBN number. And I can also search by publication year and by category. One caveat about the category search is that it seems to be a little bit limiting. So if I do a search just for category, that category search only gave us two results. If I click on the logo to go back to the home page, and this time I do a search for the phrase legal research, now when I execute that search, we're going to get many more results than just two. So here we have 123 results. You can also use the categories and the year of publication as post-search filters to limit your search. In the main part of the page, I see my search results, and the options I'm going to get for accessing these depend on what the format is. When I click on Read Offline, I get instructions for downloading separate apps depending on what sort of device I'm using. If I click on Read Online, an ebook reader will appear, and I'll see the book that I have selected. Returning to the search results, Another option is to click on the title to get a more detailed record. One of the things I see on this screen are icons next to my read options that give me options that will make it easier for me to find this book in the future. First, I can add it to a personal shelf. Here, I can either select a shelf that I have already created and add the book to that shelf, or I can type in a new shelf title and then add the book to the new shelf, and it will indicate on the screen that the book has been added successfully. Another option is to add it to my favorites. This button works like a toggle, so you can add it to your favorites or click the icon again to remove it from your favorites. Returning to the ebook reader that I opened when I first clicked Read Online, let's look at some of the top level buttons. First, this bulleted list icon will either open or close the table of contents. Over on the right, the cog is the settings option, so I can change the way that I want the book to appear on the screen. The magnifying glass is going to let me search within the content of the book. After I put in a search term, I'll see the sections of the book where that term appears, and I can click on the one that I want to look at. Once you click, it takes you to the beginning of the chapter, or in this case the appendix, where your term appears. And as you scroll down in that section of the book, you'll find that your search term is going to be highlighted. If I want to add a note or highlighting for my future reference, I can click and drag the section that I want to select, and then when I let up on my cursor, I'm going to have this pop-up that gives me various options. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Note, and the first thing I'm going to do is assign the category of purple to this particular note, and then I can type in what I want the note to say. So as you type something in, the button is going to say Saving, and when it's done, it's going to revert to Save, and then you can close the window. We now see there's an N icon here. If I click on it, it's going to open the note that I just created, and I could edit it here. I can also click the bookmark icon at the top of the page to create a bookmark straight to this page. I would recommend doing that whenever you create notes because the bookmarks are sometimes a little bit easier to use than the notes. So the notes, bookmarks, and highlights appear in the table of contents section on the left. When I click on notes, I can see the note that I just created. If I had many notes, I could search by keyword, I could search by the color category that I've assigned to them, and I can also sort them by date. I can also see where I have bookmarked something. I'm going to leave the e-reader and I'm going to return to the Aspen Learning Library. One of the ways to quickly access the books, notes, highlights that you've created is using this My Activity button. When you click on that, you'll see a way to get to your favorites to content that you've recently worked with, to content that's been shared with you, and to your notes and highlights. So scrolling down in the My Notes and Highlights section, I can see this book, and I'm going to go ahead and click this arrow to open that up and get more detail. And I can see the bookmark that I've created, and I can also see the notes I created. And if I click on that, it will open the e-reader up again, and it will take me 
to a spinning circle that lasts a very long time. So I'm going to close the ebook reader, and this time I'm going to click on the bookmark instead. And when I click on that, it takes me straight to the page that I have bookmarked. Although we're not seeing the end that indicates a note. If we go to the notes section, however, that note is still there. And with the note fully opened, you also have an option that you can delete a note if you no longer want it. Please feel free to reach out to one of the librarians if you have any questions. Thank you for watching.